What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneakers Podcast. As always, I'm here with my two co-hosts, my two friends. First off, to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. Bright and early. Bright and early. And to my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn. Hey, what's up? How are we doing? I'm, mm, I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I should lie to you and say I'm doing great. Nah, it's okay. We'll work <laughs> through. We'll work are, through. Are, are, are you hungover from getting a little drizzy? Huh? Nice. Last night? Yeah, Joe and I were at the we were. concert last night. We were. This guy was in a in a suite, different levels. I was in Gen Pop, but I liked it. You know what? I liked it. I feel like going to any of those sort of situations. Be in the crowd. Yeah, it's ten times better. Like yeah. sports or concert. I do agree with you, although there were a lot of tater tots on offer where I was sitting. Man's was and eating caviar in the sauces? in the suite. <laughs> what sauce? Um, I did ranch. Is that bad for tater tots? Yeah. Is that little, foul? Mm, it's yeah. a little weird. It's a little weird. Yeah. Like Although a I'm like a, or yeah, that's honey weird. mustard. Ketchup? I'm not a barbecue sauce guy. Did anyone like kick your uh, shorts with the tater tots like Napoleon Dynamite? <laughs> <laughs> you know that scene? It's a classic. He got in his pockets. Yeah. Uh, we're, exactly. doing, we're doing an old school complex sneakers podcast. Absolutely no sneaker talk. No. no. <laughs> um, the, the fridge was stocked with Starry though so I went in okay. on that. Yeah. Drake got a lot of hits, man. Absolutely. I was trying to decide beforehand, and I actually asked the team this, of whether or not I would be too much of a groupie if I showed up to the show with the CLB Air Force Ones on. Were you actually thinking about that? Um, Only for a split second. Which ones? The ones with the hearts on them? Yeah, the white ones with the hearts on I them. Do think that, I do think that is a good shoe. I've, I've said it on like records, just like the concept of flipping the stars on the bottom of the shoe to the, yeah. to the heart print. But Yeah, nice I, and subtle. But I feel like in that scenario mm -hmm. you're wearing like for, if you it's sort of shoe you have to look up close to kind of know what it is from yeah. afar you're not gonna see what it is and then like nice a, shoe though but in a concert i know you were in the suite but like white air force ones at a concert where no one can even mm. see up close it's almost like the risk to reward ratio of like getting your flex off like mm. maybe kind of lost and it's also the dangerous thing i guess it's equivalent to wearing someone's merch to the concert right you wear the band tee to the show of the band what did you end up wearing? Um, Air Max 95s. I was on my Joe LaPuma. Okay. I wore my Inter Milan Air Max 97s. There we go. Yeah. Big supporter. We should have broke them out. Dang. I know. Well, here's a little Easter egg. I wear them on um, Monday's episode. Of exclusive. Yep. All caps exclusive. Yep. And Tweet also I have a Breaking. Funny... All caps. Breaking. Yes. I have a funny story about the Air Max, uh, the Milan. I, I've, been, I've been getting into the zone. I think I've told you guys. Don't I've, let them get into the zone. I've alluded to this a few episodes ago like getting new shoes and putting them right on and wearing them consistently for really like, yes you're a better man weeks, than i few weeks and like really have been into it like you know not letting them i know you always put them on ice I'm, i feel like you're straight I'm to the feet. type to ice them well i i feel mm -hmm. like in, in what you're saying is maybe tie back to the last week's episode a lot of the footwear i feel like a lot of us have been purchasing or wearing mm -hmm. getting whatever these days is like meant to be more like you can just go like ready to wear mm -hmm. stuff instead of like you get a precious limited edition thing yes something tiffany that, air force so, one something, just, something yeah. that you're oh, here's a tiffany air force something one that combo. you're something that you're going to keep on ice that if you wear you're like oh it's going to crease up yeah. i don't want to break it out but so Basically, I got those. We got the friends and family ones, mm -hmm. which shout out Inter Milan. For yes, the, shouts to them. For Great the plug. Yeah, and and I got the inline pair. Yeah, that you know we were talking about, and I've been wearing them like out to dinner and like kind of around. And I went home to Bay Shore this weekend, and my mom was like, "Oh, I like those shoes." I was like, "Yeah, Air Max ninety uh, sevens." Yeah. and she was like, "I just wish that, you know." There was like a lighter colorway. I was like, oh, I'm like really into black. She was like, yeah, I really like them. So I was Wait, like, you're going sneaker shopping with your mom? Got mom the base 97s. Wow. Went out to finish line. Yeah. Restored the feeling. Did you, had I you went, see what did she you was get, feeling? I, I went, she's not. Exactly. Did, I went, did you measure her feet and then like get no, on the I know. And well, lace them I know her size. I went right to South Shore Mall, restored the feeling. You're a better son than I am as well because I definitely don't know my mom's shoe size. Walked in. To it wasn't finish line actually. Let me correct myself. I got them from Champs. Mm -hmm. I got her the beige colorway, and we all ninety seven up, baby. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we all ninety seven up. Pot Dad, you want? You know he wears the New Balance. He wants ninety sevens. We'll get him the the black and neon ones. <laughs> I, I it's, love... a, it's a ninety seven family. No, it's a ninety five family still. But Mom got the beige ninety sevens this week. I love. Um, <laughs> like... 
going into a sneaker store these days and when you have to purchase something, mm -hmm. like having the past retail history, I feel like you kind of know like the procedure etiquette to get like better or faster served. Like, oh, yeah. Ooh, I need to know this. This is a big life hack. Tell me. It's I'll a, tell you the biggest life well, hack in retail, like, but go ahead. Instead of like kind of like aimlessly walking around and kind of like waiting for someone to get your Help you out like, or notice you as a famous sneaker person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like find what you want grab it and then walk up to the thing and then just like tell them be like hey i need this bang like this size and then you just have it like, yeah. I, mean, I, know, I know i know it sounds so simple but like <laughs> it streamlines the like process of just like walking to a sneaker store and aimlessly waiting for someone to hey do you need help with <laughs> it wasn't the life hack i was hoping for <laughs> well i always get the multiples what do yeah. you mean? I'll always get a pair of socks or a cleaner just because I was there. I, you know, I remember we worked hard. You know, my selling tactics, you know, they don't even – sometimes they don't even offer socks or cleaners, but I, I always get multiple sales. Uh, the one thing that – I don't know if you were taught the biggest, like, retail life hack. If you're any managers out there of retail stores, mm -hmm. I don't know if this has changed, but, like, I always notice it. It's when the biggest thing, even though this, the – sales like customer service on the floor is obviously super important yep. when there's a line at the register mm -hmm. and there's only one person on the register you have to put two people on the register yeah like that's the biggest thing and it's one thing that i always notice even if it's like um not even sneaker stores but like you're just in stores and there's like people stocking shelves mm -hmm. it, our directive was always like if there is a line at the register Help long get line shoes. stop what you're yeah. doing Get the get the lines the going. Yeah. Out of there. yeah. But yeah, so So was, you're actually in there as a charitable thing, buying the multiples, buying the accessories that yes. go with the shoes just because you I got lived six, that life. Yeah, I got a six pack of Nike socks for her too. Did did Beautiful. you see you spoke you said the neon ninety sevens. Did you see those black neon ninety fives? What do you mean? What do you mean? You <laughs> see this is a, here's a little here's a little here's a little here's a little Easter egg for the audience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we talk to each other. I've been traveling. These guys have been going through a lot of um, <laughs> behind the scenes, behind the scenes drama. stuff. Yeah. That, nothing. Everything's okay, but yeah, like well, yeah. schedules permitted. Mm -hmm. So here's I had this on my docket. Okay, mm -hmm. I got added on two shoes in the last four days. They popped up on social media. And people yeah. were tagging you big at and I, JLP show. And let me tell you, I love when people do that. Were they right or wrong? I love when people do that. So keep doing that. I feel like he kind of invented the big JLP shoe. People DM me random sneakers and they're like, big JLP shoe? I love that. Mark? Comme des garçons. <laughs> Put them in the sixes. Get a, yes. Listen, big don't JLP take it shoe. to their DMs. Take it right to the comments. <laughs> and I'll address it on here. So past few days, 50-50 hit rate. Okay. Not a big JLP shoe. The all black Vapor Max mock. Did mm. you see those? Yeah, I saw those because we broke the that news. shoe oh, months ago and oh, leaked it. And some should. other sites posted this week. First look at the vape. No, the first look was on the Complex Sneakers website. I missed that. Ago, so but, sorry about but that. Okay. Big JLP shoe was. So that one is not really a big JLP shoe. That's just yeah. like super black. It kind of, you know, maybe resembles the CDG Sunder Max. So I could see where people were saying Are that. Are you but... a Vapor Max guy? We had some fun in Vapor Maxes back in the day. We well, did. The, I don't think you ever hopped on the Vapor Max train. No, but he I interviewed Tra he has interviewed Travis. He has a Pulitzer, Pulitzer Award winning <laughs> Travis Scott interview yeah. about the Vapor Maxes. Go yeah. read that. Yeah. I remember sitting like right near the, oh, interviewing Travis Scott. And I remember the the ad and and then. But he chose it to me. But that's the, huge. But that's huge. It is huge. Email interview. Yeah. One for the record, I guess. It happens. Listen, I said 50 50, big JLP shoe. Okay, Hit sorry, me. sorry, sorry. The one that is definitely yeah. a JLP Bullseye. shoe. Black the reverse, neon, right on the money. The reverse black neon Air Max 95 with the gradient. I've been reading. It's like a few months. They look. You need um, it? I need them. And you know why I need them? The stuff dreams are made of. Because I got a heavy match it. <laughs> Wait, you got it? Because I have to heavy match it. Zoom in. I have to heavy match it to... You Pulling guys saw? You guys today. were... You, the audience was confused about the Ricky Henderson batting gloves. Really? Mizuno, hold on, that I wore on here Why were they a few episodes. Well, it's a confusing thing if you just see me in batting gloves on the show. <laughs> but, I thought he was going to a Drake concert. But I was searching. I always like said that. I was searching for like the OG mm -hmm. on eBay. Well, mm -hmm. I found an OG, Ricky Henderson, the original one. Or I found the OG. He, yes, he did. Sorry. <laughs> hold on. He did. He did. He wants his what? Credit. Step in. He wants his credit. Someone hit me up and said, 
I, I don't know if he saw this or not, because I know your DMs are probably crazy. No, I don't know why he didn't hit me up. And oh, I thought he'd hit you up, but it's the person who had hit me up and said, hey, look what I found. And they, it was a signed Ricky Henderson. Signed. That's game incredible. Worn. Can I see this? Yeah. yeah. Wait, I'm not going to drop it. Just not, gently, I don't know if it's Game Worn. It I don't think it is. But original packaging from the 90s. You'd be like Ken Golden? Yeah, we got to get Ken to authenticate yeah. this. You get the no, it is authenticated. You need to get the oh, white yeah? gloves to touch the glove. <laughs> Adult large, just in case I want to hit the cages in Staten Island one day. Right. But you see the... I see the signature, yeah. Yeah, so an alley from him, but... He, he bought it right on the spot. We sent it to the... I was like, yes. hey, Joe, I didn't know if you saw this. Uh, he's like, where did you find this? He doesn't look that impressed. I, that's cool. The Mizuno, I have the prototype if we want to bring it back. And look, the Ricky Henderson signature. The one thing we're going to realize, though, Joe, because I know we've had this conversation on here before, so you said heavy matching. This is a neon green. You're going to get the neon yellow Air Max 95s. You're going to put this on with that, and you're going to realize, finally... That the Air Max 95s in OG colorway do not match with this shade of green. What about the new one? The big JLP shoe coming in a few months. The little swoosh? <laughs> okay. You know what? I love those as well. And oh, they're fire. I don't know if it's you who's influenced me or what, but I was digging out. You've been on a 95 like train. Exactly. And I don't really know where this came from. I don't know if Thank it's you. if it's my version of this reaction that we've talked about in the greater sneaker landscape of doing mm -hmm. anti-hype stuff and not being mm -hmm. that interested in the super duper yeah. limited collab ultra flashy colorway. Mm -hmm. But but I feel like maybe my version of that is just going back to clean solid Air Maxes and I've GR Air Max stuff. Yeah, I've wanted so much to just wear solid Air Max 95s, OG colorways, gradient. I was even on GOAT putting in bids on old random pairs that Welty and I have spoken about at yeah. length privately for years. Like you 2010, know. 2011 era. Yeah, stuff like that. Or even yep. just like looking back, there's so many good gradient Air Max 95s that I forgot about, like pink foam ones and stuff from like two or three years ago that I just think about. And I'm like, why Why would I not have purchased this shoe so that's that's i'm i'm and again maybe it's the joe lapuma thing that he's yeah, influenced me here Fresh, appreciate it freshwater 95s i remember that was like i remember going to uh the the foot action in the, silver lake uh, no in um is this a store in jersey no it was in boston uh i'm so, uh, sorry i forget what the name of the the town concepts <laughs> no it was a no it was a foot the action tannery? foot action oh, sorry i just forget the name just of the name I, 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 I just forget the name of the <laughs> Boy, the the town. It was on the. I'm just like <laughs> on the name of the town. It's early, but it was on the Johnny out, Cupcakes out outskirts. But uh, the Griffies dropped the same, water, yeah. at the same mm -hmm. time as the Freshwater, same colorway. And my friend bought. We went and I used the employee discount. My friend bought the Griffy Air Max ones, and I bought the Freshwater 95s. Is okay. that the same pair that you eventually ruined? When yeah, and that's the same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That threw I know the, the story. threw the iced coffee on the shoes. Why did he do that? He was trying to. He, he was just trying to coffee in the back dye seat. him way before it was popular. I don't know why. He just put it in the back seat and it like exploded all if over my. If you were into your CrossFit days, would there have been fisticuffs? Or... <laughs> <laughs> if someone drops an iced coffee on your shoe, Joe, that's fine. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's fine. No, it's not. We get a. You we get a. Do the right thing. No, we get an insert sneaker if someone drops here nice to help. To if help. So, yeah. But, you know. What if someone yeah. drops a nice coffee on that? Uh, that Ricky Henderson batting glove. That'd be a tough one, but Jason Mark time. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> a know? tough one, but also, you know, we have we, we figure it out. Joe, so you wearing the Nike uh, tennis hat today? Yes. Did we see yesterday? Sneaker King, Sneaker Taco Well, well uh, yeah, <laughs> he's always Andre here Agassi. For Agassi related. Things. I saw that and broke out the hot, the hot lava. Got the biggest cosign too. Air Tech Challenge to what? Rich Antonello, oh, <laughs> best yes. shoe ever, best sneaker ever made. Yes, Rich Antonello tagged all of us on social media. Yeah, but confirming. At, he said he was wearing them in the 111 degrees yeah. Las Vegas heat. I it's think a hot there's, shoe. I think I have some Air Tech Challenge retro news here to share. Hold oh, on, wow. let me see if I can uh, pull it crates? up on my phone <laughs> real quick here. Um, I feel like it wasn't that exciting. Oh, Air Tech Challenge 2, I think we'll be back for a Fall 2024. Okay. So that's what one person tells me. Take was, from that what how, you will. How fun was that when they were dropping all those, uh, the Air Tech Challenge 2s for the Grand Slams, like the Wimbledon yes. colorway? Was that the blue, I the black so and blue? I enjoyed that the moment Aust for the, the Australian Air Tech Open Challenge one. Too. It's like the the orange and blue pair. Yeah. Was there the black and blue pair yeah, too? Yes. Yeah, that, that I wore the US, US Open. Open. I wore those all the time. That was one of my all time greatest. They were so flips. good. Like every single one of them, because yeah. there was a lot of really bad. 
GR air tech challenges that got made at that time where you look yes. back and you're like, whoa, you made a tan one with a Volt Soul like that. Yeah. There's a Christmas sweater air tech challenge that should, really? Yeah. Oh, you're right. It should have never been made. But all of those Grand Slam ones are so I'm good. Looking, I'm looking back at these. Look at these. This was this was an era. Wealthy this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wore these so much. Air tech challenges. I mean, I know a lot of people are talking about, you know, with the Mac attack mm -hmm. or the attack coming back and that whole Nike tennis era, but the air tech challenge is just like the greatest like Nike tennis shoe. Yes, you're absolutely right. I remember buying that black and blue pair of the air tech challenge mm -hmm. shoe. I don't remember where I would have purchased it from because those shoes were kind of hard to get and kind of yeah. limited at the time. And they were like unannounced shock drop style yeah. things that would happen. And I think I sold those. Actually, I could probably find the old receipt here I definitely in my posted email. Those. But I think I sold those at Flight Club for like $800. Whoa. Which I don't think anybody is paying that now, now but for that, them. But in that period, it was like you couldn't get them. And yeah. I think I bought the French Open Air Tech Challenge 2 at Dover Street Market. That was the white pair with the lava hits on the side. And yeah. I think I sold them to Russ Bankson for retail. Mm. And then he later posted them for sale on his social media okay. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, that was a fun era. Australian Open, the yep. really colorful pair. Yeah. What else was there's in that the, set? Was the Wimbledon, which was like the green one? Yeah, I think that's the Wimbledon one, right? Yeah. Man, they went hard with those Air Tech challenges in that era. Oh yeah, like the U.S. Open one that was the red, white, and blue as well. Brendan, I'm so. Uh, I know we talked about the the. Mac attack, mm -hmm. Nike yeah. attack. I saw a few of those at the concert last night. S that shoe, like you don't like it. It's no, it's just like it doesn't fit your foot. It's so small. I haven't small. worn them yet. I have it's a pair. Like I picked it, like I got a pair, took them out of the box, and just like held it in my hand, and mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa, like you know, like if you pick you don't up like a the last, it just doesn't. It like just looking at it, I'm like this shoe. It just can tell it's not going to fit on your foot. Did you, you try and put it on? Yes. And did mm -hmm. you use a shoehorn? It's it, it's so it's so <laughs> it's so narrow. Yeah. Like the toe box of that shoe is so narrow that I'm like, this doesn't fit. So let me ask you this. Wrong size. Is there any chance that we need to brannick you? I think I brannick I brannick myself. When we did that? Yeah. When we decided I have that like I was my, in my the feet are two different size. sizes. But okay, okay. I put it on my smaller foot in which is a ten and a half and it didn't fit. Hmm. What do we do in those moments when we buy a pair of sneakers and they don't fit for us? Do you actually fight that? It's weird because you might give it a go, you yeah. know, where you're like, hey, it's a little tight on my left foot because I always have that issue anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, but it depends. I might wear it for like it a stretches. half an hour and it stretches out and it's fine. Yeah. But then sometimes when you do it and then it gets tighter for some reason, you're yeah. like, hey, I'm going to wear these to the office. And then you're in the subway and you're like trying to like... You're sitting in the subway, like taking the shoe, like mm -hmm. off half of your foot. What would you guys rather, too tight or too big? Oh, this is actually a. a it depends. I've I have thought a, through this so much. It depends. I, I know the answer. So here's the thing. I would rather take it too tight, and I will always buy the smaller size because I am so self-conscious and I'm worried that the bigger Flopping size around. is going to look big on me and yes. people are going to be able to tell. Even though no one ever I with their naked eye will be able to just like look at you that quickly mm -hmm. and be like, oh, that shoe is big on that person. But me personally, I would rather take the I smaller think... one, even though I also know some people who are super into collecting sneakers and are a little bit older and their feet have grown in size. And I think yeah. sometimes your feet can grow half a size as you get older because you kind of like flatten out and mm -hmm. spreads out a bit. But I'll always take the smaller size. I've certainly regretted it at times. Same here. I think it's, they said it's your feet. Your ears and your nose are like the only like body parts that like continue to interesting grow as you oh, wow. get older. But either way, who um, said that the University of Berkeley Science? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I think it depends on what you mean by too tight. Yeah. Like defi like define what too tight is because mm. there's shoes that are a little snug where you're like, yeah. hey, I can get away with it. Like yeah. No blister, but I, no blisters. Yeah, That's I, where I, you I draw can, the line. I, yeah, but there's a shoe where I put it on and I'm like, no, this hurts my foot. Yeah, like, no. like but hurts. Small. Some of those I've, I've fought through. I mean, oh. honestly, Air Max 95s at times. That's one of the no, pinky I mean, toe crushers. That, really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like too short on like my big foot and yeah. I'm just like, ugh, it, it, it's not going to work. But you know, like saying like too big and then my small foot, if it's too big, the shoe just starts coming off, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I can't wear these, mm -hmm. so it doesn't. You know what is a, a shoe that so represents that to me of putting it on and it's too tight? Nike Air Hirachi Light. 
Oh yeah, those are you Hirachis in general? Hirachis run, in general, yes. Yeah, so like, there was a there was a time when the Hirachi retros were super prevalent in the early mid two thousand tens, where those were so snug. You know, the original tagline, of course, is "Have you hugged your foot today?" Literally, mm. <laughs> more than have hug. You, have you squeezed your foot today? Yeah, and people were just Put buying a, a full size feet up. Put your feet in a rear naked chokehold. But I, I could never, I could never buy a full size up like that. And even Air Force Ones that I own, I get self conscious that I don't have a size ten because you know yeah. we all should know that you should be going half, half a size down in Air Force Ones. Yes. So some so wait, so you need have, like a nine and a half now. I mean, maybe. There, there are certain Air Force. I have HTM Air Force ones in a ten and a half, and I'm like, oh, I don't even know if I should wear these. It's really funny you bring up the Hirachi. I wore the Hyper Punches. I love them because yeah. you know you can kind of see black and pink with a little bit of green is like a colorway that I would be into. And yeah. you, it's funny that you say so snug. Putting them on, yeah. they're like I wore them maybe ten times, and putting them on was so tough. I ripped. The, the back, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The back tab, yeah, yeah. The back tab, the plastic back tab, like because I was right struggling to put yeah. them on, just just ripped after like ten wears. That's how tough it was I to think get I those remember, on. I remember, I remember getting the OG uh, Nike Hirachis, the screen green, yeah, the white, blue, and beautiful. Green. Yeah, so and nice. I remember going to Foot Locker on Thirty Fourth Street, like the before they remodeled it with like the escalator and everything, and I got the shoes. 11 and a half and i'm like oh they're a little snug you know and i put them on and then i got home and i tried to put those things on like and wear them like a month later and i'm just like you gave up on it it was so i didn't i don't know how i put it on in the store and thought it was going to be okay <laughs> i told myself no this is fine and then i got home and that shoe just like doesn't fit my foot like in any imagination of the sense yeah joe speaking of things that uh mm -hmm can't wear we had a conversation a couple weeks ago yes um based off of something that i had mentioned to you a year ago which sometimes happens and you awfully dismissed me at the time but then you <laughs> i have no idea where he's going don't look at me i don't know what, so what this i is always about. tell him if he's right though okay so <laughs> I, I think and i tell him when he's wrong i think it was it was about a year ago and i remember saying to joe hey at what point I know what you're talking about. At what point in life? I, that's why I wore these. At what point in life do you think, hey, I'm kind of over wearing high top sneakers? Yes. And you go, that's a, and you originally said to me, that's a stupid thing to say. Okay. I don't know if I said that, but maybe. <laughs> he might have been getting on my nerves. He might have been getting on my nerves it's, it's, when he asked. <laughs> and, and, and it's valid, but go ahead. And. I, I guess the point being that I'm not saying that you can't wear okay. high top shoes, but I just feel like you're allowed to. Well, yeah, allowing of course, you to wear 100. percent But I just feel like at <laughs> a you. certain age, you kind of just gravitate towards, hey, maybe wearing like a Air Jordan 13 or a Charles Barkley high top maybe isn't the most comfortable thing to put or slip on your foot, and mm -hmm. you just opt for comfort a little bit more, mm -hmm. and then. Okay, you, so here's what I would say. We we talked about this. And I would agree that my pushback, I would say, though, is that I didn't I didn't wear like a 13 or a Charles Barkley yeah. uh, that often anyway. Yeah. But I do see what you're saying. Or... But I also think it has less to do with that, even though I kind of like agreed with you when we talked about it. Yeah. I think it has less to do with that than Wait, I'm I just. You, I you told no, you told me, me you told me that I said something stupid. Two weeks ago, I okay, kind of agreed okay, with okay. you. Okay. Remember who fronted. <laughs> He'll remember everything. He'll remember everything. But I think what we talked about is like, I think it is getting a little tougher for me to wear Jordan 1s. I haven't worn you, them in, in a while. You, you, do you know the last time you wore them? I wear the 85s yeah. that have like no yeah. sole, and I wear them for episodes. But yeah. like, I can't imagine like... Like Saturday Joe LaPuma yeah, like I just, stepping out the apartment. But I, I don't think it has anything to do with like, more it, it has more to do with I'm just like in the 95 zone yeah you know but the one that I kind of had a revelation about like I haven't worn a black cement three in so long that's not even a high top I know you're wearing black cement the legendary pair the endless summer the endless summer fours these though are so beat and broken in that they're so so comfortable yeah. another shoe that I disagreed with you that I would wear that kind of pokes holes in like your statement, yeah. literally mm. and figuratively. Ooh. Those off white fives I would wear. Yeah, no like, matter what. No matter what. But I see what you're saying. And what do you what do you 
like attribute it to? I don't know. I, you me, never me, wore. Always been just a low top guy yeah. out, of, out of comfort. Uh, it's just it's a comfort thing to me. I know. I, I feel like at, at some point you see one lows. I know Travis did a lot for it, getting mm. more popular because a lot of people they like ones, but I don't know. Like a, it's a lot. I hear a lot of people say that like just putting on a super high top shoe, they're just like, oh, I can't do it anymore. Can you remember ever seeing Wealthy in a high shoe? I'm trying to think. Like I feel like I've seen you wear a pair of Dunk highs, but um, maybe for. Uh, like a shoot or something yeah, like, like Mork that. and Mindy's or something like the that. The Otto Masumoto's you wore. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, creative know, recreations man. you used to step around. <laughs> oh, <in>. creative recs. <laughs> I think. I, I think. I think. Just you ever own a pair of creative recs? Uh, I, no, I was going to, and I did. I didn't pull the trigger I on was it. Heavy and creative. Recs. I bet you were, my, buddy. We need know, those photos. Well, well, my complex interview. I wore creative rec. Cesario, yeah. you yeah. know that story. <laughs> yeah, with the Michael I know Kors you... sweater and button-up fit, and the the blue. We know the story. We the know two, the legend. Yeah, the two-tone blue creative Rex Cesario lows. But yeah, filthy. So I know that you were trying to dunk on me just now, but I'm thinking. Dunk. Fun intended. Dunk high. I'm yeah. just thinking. I don't know. Dunk high. I haven't been wearing high tops that much. When was the last dunk high I wore? But like you're by the, was Michigan. You're, you're by the door rotation. Not talking about doing shoots. Yep. Wearing shoes for special occasions, et yep. cetera, et cetera. Talking about the shoes that you wear in your day-to-day life. Have Solomon's. You, have you found yourself shifting from more high tops to low top shoes? or Yes, but I've also shifted heavily to like fitness mesh. Yeah. like uh, And Solomon's, uh, Air Max 95, tons near my door. Is it a comfort thing for you? or is I it think just so. Like a... Yeah, it is. I feel like there was a time when I would keep a pair of blazers and a pair of dunk highs oh, by the door. Blazers. I know you had those, like that vintage pair that you wore. Like, the Nike dunk high, the, the red Saint and white John's ones. looking one. Yeah, and that has to do also with it being a leather shoe because mm-hmm. the stuff I keep by the door is a lot of times things that I know I can mess up and clean relatively easily, even though that's the vintage pair yeah. with the yeah. faux distressing so you can't clean them that well. Yeah. yeah. Or things that are kind of already at the beater level and I don't have to worry too much about yeah. You yeah. know, getting getting it, caught in the wrong situation. It's just, we're in the Air Max. We're not. I wouldn't call this an Air Max. Would you call this an Air Max moment? Well, it might be something that's in our wait for it bubble because mm. I'm very inclined toward wearing, as I said earlier, nondescript, plain, relatively speaking, that is retro Air Maxes. But I don't know how much of a movement that is beyond yeah, I don't, my personal no. taste. I, I mean, Even though I think there's a lot of good ones. I do out think. There right now. I do think. People do still do wear Max, so we don't want to be like, no, people don't wear Air Max. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of people out there be like, oh, yeah. everyone wears Air Max, you know. But I do think, but I think Air Max has taken a cool, back seat cool, in the past, cool down five yeah. years to things like the Dunk. Yeah, or well, of course that. But I mean, like, I guess maybe right now you have like maybe like a Vumero over like a Air Max ninety five as far as like where Nike's momentum seems to be going. Yeah, Cortez Air Max. 95. Of course, oh. Air but, Max. But oh you had you Air had, Max Plus coming had, up a cold wall. Dude, I keep I keep wanting to buy random Air Max Pluses and TNs. I was that, I was spending time earlier this week looking at random again rediscovering GR yep. inline Air Maxes from years ago that I like. Wait, this came out and I never purchased this. I want so many TNs. We had right now. the we had the big bubbles Air Max Ones come out this year, and I almost feel like mm. that shoe it, it came and went. Yeah, I would agree with that. It did. Yeah, you're right. I just don't. I just can't I have those. Shape in, on I those. remember being like somewhat excited about it, and then yeah. being like, "It's summertime. I should be wearing those." And then the feeling not... of white and red Air Max ones in the summertime. Mm. Maybe I'll wear them. Mm. That's such a pure, beautiful thing. It is. Joe, you mentioned Cortez Air Max ninety fives. Yes. I have to go off on a little tangent here. Well, you were in London. Yes. What was the I was street... everywhere. Okay. What was the street saying upon the re-release? And did you get your pair finally? Joe, I did not get a pair. Damn. Thank you for asking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They dropped another set of Cortez 95s in London. This was the canceled pairs from the online orders. The bots and resellers. Yeah, exactly. I was so distraught because <laughs> I spent a, a week in London. Distraught. And this is... I think Crying it, in his hotel room. <laughs> distraught. <laughs> <laughs> wandering around the South London streets. Just wondering what my life was. No, I... This is a shoe I've been pursuing for a while, and I keep wondering whether or not I should just pull a trigger on the resale market. And then they announced this re-release, but it actually happened the day after I left London. And I thank you, you for. You think they did that on purpose? <laughs> they know you're a yeah, reseller. That's be. it. Could be, but I had <laughs> get them out of here and then tagging, drop them. Yeah, I had a bunch of people tagging me like, "Oh, these are about to come back, Brendan. You know, pull up the release." And I, 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 it's been so long since I've done an in-person release like that, and it would have been so much fun, even though I 
maybe would have failed the mission. But also, I love that they sold them for 110 pounds, you know. Yeah, 110. Yeah, and in, in just reference yeah. to that history behind the shoe, still still an important, cool shoe to me. But, yeah, I'm still still elusive for me. And I'll tell you, those guys know what they're doing with the yeah. imagery, with all the boxes. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. you know, yeah, stacked yeah, yeah. up the brick wall. Very I cool. want to get back to the high tops because I do kind of have, like, a weird hot take for myself. Okay. okay. Go easier for, for me to wear high tops that are a little worn jordan sixes infrared a little with that a has little, to be the comfort thing with right? a no a little wear to them i i think when i think high tops dsing high top it feels so stiff to me yeah yeah that's what you're saying comfort like it's, it's almost like can oh, constrictive I, on your foot i meant i'm talking about not the as, look the look the, the look. look the look my favorite thing when we were commuting five days into the office i don't know if it was the same person that i used to see but like a few times a year, I would see someone on the subway with a pair of beat up black and royal Jordan ones. And those aren't even my favorite colorways, but mm -hmm. I was just like, these look so good beat up. And when I've been wearing the high tops, like I said, it's been the 85 breads or the 94 Chicago ones because they have wear to them. I think our friend Goodberger actually set the record straight on that shoe and uh, said that 1990 there's a there's a huge I guess contention about this 94 95 right the Air Jordan 1 actually came out in 1995 so when the Air Jordan line first got retroed in 1994 it was the black cement 3 was the first shoe that got retroed and that shoe came out in 1994 I believe the Air Jordan 1s were manufactured in 1994 but there's no actual proof that the shoes were actually released in 1994 and they actually I trust came, him on that they yeah. came the actually got released in 1995 and I just think it's interesting because it's such like a sneakerhead thing the 1994 like you have 85 ones 1990 I always call one ninety four two thousand 2001 and, and this is important history to preserve too because I feel like this happens somewhat often on sneakers where things that came out before we were so feverishly documenting every single release or the brands just put all like this like internet press release out for it you know the shoes from before all that existed mm -hmm. the way people discern a lot of the times is just look inside the tongue and look at the date that's inside yeah. the tongue but that date is the production date not the actual date the shoes came out or and just finding an old months later or you just know just finding an old blog post that said there was only 36 pairs made of this shoe and then didn't realize that that wasn't accurate, but it was just someone had posted that in 2009 on a sneaker site. Yeah, it, it gets shaky. It gets shaky for sure. But yeah, that's what I wanted to come back to it. Speaking of comfortable shoes, though, one thing I think we need to talk about, these Teddy Santis 860 V2s that got posted Don't, last night. Okay, so you're <laughs> super, you said that I would be super into them. I, that's not that. That's more of a Ben Felderstein colorway. You don't like that shoe? Uh, it's not that I this don't like is, it, but I don't feel this like... This is the orange and red yeah. gradient type? Yeah. I like it. I don't know if I would wear it. So here's another thing about me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm into darker mesh. That's yeah. why I went and bought... I, I, but, but that's not that dark. That's but I why feel I went like, and I feel bought... Like you, I, I feel like you need a... You're looking for your place to play in, <laughs> in this trend because not a white mesh guy, but you want to get on the white mesh trend. So you're trying Do to... You? No. You're trying Do to... You? No. No, I'm not saying the white mesh trend. I mean like the, the style. He's of trying the, to hop on the bandwagon? The style of the mesh running shoe trend, but you're looking for your place to... The, the thing that you can wear because you had said point. after last week's podcast, we talked about the Dime 860 V2... The navy and the black pair, yep. you just went out and copped them. Yes. This teddy pair, red and orange 860 V2 that he put out to the world in between showing everyone grease. I thought that you it would just be uh, something for you, Joe. It looks like almost like an Air Max 120. Yeah, it does feel Big like Mark that McGuire one. Big yes. Well, also, I have to mention our co-worker, Zach DeBasic, came with some bars for it and uh, said it, it, looks, always, like, it looks like the, we have Dorn Becker Vomeros at home. <laughs> Here's what I would say my place to play in the mesh because you want it you want it bad <laughs> this show you're looking for the right <laughs> joe wait what is... about my asics do you break them out no remember with the ones yeah. i was wearing wait joe i saw this last night on ig and i know you had said that this is a no for you tell me tell me right now <laughs> this is still a no for you no what no. is it? I can Fomero. barely see it. And also, you got to explain to the people listening. Fomero. Sorry, going up, it's still they, a no. What, what is it's it? What are we no. looking it's, at? It's a triple black Vumero with, still a no. with 3M hits on it. Joe, what? It's still a no. What? It's still explain a no. Explain that. No, I'm you have to explain I'm not into Vumeros this. like that. I'm just not. Okay, you don't have They're to They're a be... little too low for me. 
Oh, you do. Low, you've been, you just were talking sense? about how you won't wear high shoes. There's a no, low shoe for no, you. No, they're a little. I, I guarantee you, you're going to put it on, and you're. It, we just need to like somehow like not stage intervention, but just yeah. figure oh out my, a way. Figure out a way go. where somehow you're walking and your foot just happens to slip into it. <laughs> I'm not into the Vomeros. And then I'm not you're going to be like, you're going to be like, hey, wait, yeah, we're going to have a mirror right next to you. Right next to you. It's going to be like in the green room <laughs> this over is real there. Real customer service. And I, all of a sudden you're going to be like, no, kind of hit. No. And then you take a, you take a few steps. Joe starts to feel that zoom air pulsing. Like no, sending. Uh, you don't even wear Vomeros. I don't. I mean, I don't have a pair yet, but I would wear them. Joe, I don't think so. Why? Because I'd rather wear Air Maxes, 97s. I I rather wear the- zoom air is so much better than Air Max on your foot. He's got a point. The second you More feel that zoom technology. air, the second you feel that zoom air like compress and the you're like tensile fibers, it feels still s- a no for me. We'll see. I change my mind often though. We'll see. Maybe one day I walk in here, surprise you like I did with the Ricky Henderson batting glove, and it's just Vimeros, <laughs> wow, okay? Yeah, know. You know that'll that'll make headlines okay? across the sneaker internet. Okay. <laughs> Joe Lapuma breaking all caps breaking Maybe. exclusive. <laughs> yeah, but I was Joe Lapuma on... wears his first pair of Vimeros. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I was on like the A6 a little bit with the Vivian Westwoods. Okay. You didn't Sorry. like those? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I don't. I love those. But also, that's not quite the same mesh, silvery synthetic thing. Actually, you know what? You know what? You guys, <laughs> no, go, 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 go. I, I almost, <laughs> oh. I, what, what's up? They're what's fire. Up? What, the Vivian, I remember the you, Vivian thro- Westwood you were throwing, yeah, he was throwing shade. Wow, the smallest picture. You were throwing shade <laughs> on me about these. No, I, I remember. Was, no, I was not. You were hating on Joe Lapuma. I feel like you no, didn't I like was those, not. No, I was not. And there is, there actually is a Vivian. Oh, these are good. Westwood Asics. When you talk about mesh, I feel like there's a there's a Vivian Westwood Asics shoe where it has a whole mesh bag that like covers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The upper of the mm-hmm. shoe. It's a good shoe, Joe. Yeah. I'm still hating. Kayano 5 OG. I had, I said yes. recently, if that shoe dropped right now in the OG colorway, the white, blue, and yellow. Mm-hmm. I still it, have some pairs of iced. It would hit. Got a boy. Our friend Ronnie Feig chimes in and goes, look look, look who did it uh, early because he had that. Uh, Team early. He, the Ronnie Feig. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Kayano 5 collaboration. That the was light like, blue with the yellow? Yep. Yeah. And I look back at those. I'm like, if that shoe came out this summer. Will you show me a photo? I don't remember that off top. The the A6 one? Yeah. I believe you had a pair. I had one. I will say this. This is how my brain works yeah. in, in you, terms you know of. You these. What are the? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those. This is how my brain works in terms of looking for a cool thing to wear that's somewhat contrarian or if you know, you know. <laughs> And this is just me being honest. I'm yeah. not proud of this, okay. but we've talked a lot about the mesh runner trend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was, again, taking it back to my trip to London. I was mm-hmm. hanging out with our friend Magdi in his studio space for Archive DNA, where he has some insane <sighs> sneakers yeah. Yeah. tucked away, piled high. Did you cop from him at all? So here's the thing. Okay. Magdi, a, a dear friend, he was pulling stuff out. Things I'd never seen before, mm. random shoes that you wouldn't imagine mm-hmm. exist, like footscapes with patent leather on them yep. and things like that. And he pulls out a shoe I, 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 you know, didn't know, but Nike Air Perseus Three, and it's it looks exactly like a shoe that they would retro right now and it would be all over. Mm-hmm. So uh, red hits and just silver mesh. Yeah, look look up the shoe. It'd yeah. be so perfect as a retro right now. And he was like, you should you should get these. And I was considering it. But then I was like, this is me trying way too hard to respond to a current trend in this clever way of like, yeah, you guys are doing Vimeros because that's a retro. Well, guess yeah. what? I went and got the Air Perseus 3. Damn yeah, it, you don't know about niche, these. <laughs> in the most niche way possible. Exactly. Right. It, it would have been it would have been too much of a try hard oh, moment, wow. something I would never do. Uh, I, had a, I had a moment like that uh, last night because I had said that I thought that Teddy was going to expand this uh, the mesh runner trend. Mm-hmm. Can't say any names, but someone who works for New Balance, says to me, Europe's been doing the mesh runner trend for the past four years. And they, they go back to when the 860 V2 first the came, one? F- the first came out. Just, no, oh, just like that, okay. when they when they first mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah, did yeah. that shoe, they go, but I can't publicly put that out there. But, yeah, but, who, but, but we've been doing- We got somebody to do it for them. That's him. fine, <laughs> but, but, we, but, we, but we've been doing the trend for a minute. Hold up, I wanna say this. I, again, this is I, not to keep going back here, but I wish I was still on vacation, so I'm going to keep going back the there. The birth souls are. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was surprised at how little New Balance I saw across the UK, and I guess this is less of a place you associate with New Balance. But I was in the Netherlands afterward. I I, I just didn't see that many people wearing New Balance. Did you in see London. Nike? 
What's up? Nike. Yeah, a decent amount of Nike, Adidas, and things like that. I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I, I was expecting more. I just, it just wasn't. So that's my reaction to that. You got to get to the UK. <laughs> sort them out. You know? <laughs> just straighten we'll, them out. We'll oh, also, another thing I want to mention on the Air Max 95 tip. One of the shoes, this is, this is funny. I guess a couple of the shoes I'm really lusting after are 95s, which speaks maybe to Joe LaPuma's influence. Talk Somebody sent it. me a pair of size 10 Mita Air Max 95s. Oh, you finally got it? Ungrailed. The prototype <sighs> pair based on it. the, you know, with the black tongue. Okay. And, and they're not that expensive. You what are you it. doing? Here's the thing. They look good on the photos, and maybe we could put the photos in here. But I feel like the photos don't really tell the true story of how worn the shoe is. Oh, uh, you're worried? Yeah, especially because also that's an old shoe. It could fall apart. You know, it's yeah. 10 years old now. And, you know, we don't need eight weeks of uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> soul, souls combusting all over complex social media. <laughs> you know me, so, I would really hate if my shoes <laughs> yeah, fell apart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although the Air Max ones I took to, to Europe oh, I saw that. fell apart, right? But Not quite. You okay. said, to go back to that, now, I'm not uh, debating... Um, what shoes are popular in, in certain places. Yeah. But I guess it makes sense that you go to a place like Netherlands and mm -hmm. Nike's so big because Nike's European headquarters. Yeah, the MA headquarters in Hilversum. Yeah. I've always associated Netherlands and Amsterdam in, in larger with just being Nike Air Max, mm. like central. Because of Pada, because of Para, right? Because of things like that? Because of that, but I, I, I I'm not... I don't, I don't know, but I would imagine that Nike being in that country, it's just like going to Portland sure. and seeing a lot of Air, a Nike product, and you're like, well, why is there so much Nikes here? And it's like, it's just kind of like a cultural thing. Yeah, maybe that's it. Did you see a lot of Yeezys out there? Yeah, I don't really think that the deterioration of the Kanye West brand did that much to hurt how, I've, I've always, how, how many Yeezys you see around. I've always said... I. I've said it on here. I think that there's this, like, we've gotten so far down the rabbit hole with, like, sneakers mm -hmm. at this mm -hmm. point that there's such a, I don't want to say separation, but, a like. disconnect. Yeah, that the people who are super into the Yeezy, 350 mm -hmm. especially, they know who Kanye West is mm -hmm. most likely, but they're not buying the shoes because of Kanye West sure. in any form. Like Just recognizing the shoes and they want yeah, it. Yeah, like. Before, after any of the controversies, mm -hmm. his music and his career and legacy beforehand didn't mm -hmm. get them into Yeezys, mm -hmm. and they aren't wearing the Yeezys at this point as some like anti cancelable like counterculture. Right, it's just statement. a shoe that yeah. like I, you know, I'd be interested to know how many people don't even know that Yeezy is affiliated with Kanye West or Yeezy hmm. is a product of That'd Kanye be West. Because the amount of people you see in 350s and Wave Runners and things like that, I, I think it's probably higher than we'd imagine. But it it's going to be higher soon. We're going to see more Yeezy soon enough. News came out this week. Well, these wow. wealthy's already already, already yes. disgruntled at the it? idea. It's just I've I've been over like though I I would I've said on here I think one of the more refreshing things this year so far is that it feels like there's been so much more diversity in product. Where it's not like when we especially do things like full size run, we have to go through what are the weekly sneaker drops, mm -hmm. and we're gonna pick out what's dropping this week. And it feels like for a while it was like, oh, there's another colorway of a Jordan One, and there's another shade of like a Yeezy 350. Are we gonna throw this one in in the mix? You know, and it's just <laughs> yeah. like, and it was like that, like you said, going to these resale shops and yeah. just seeing yeah. the same Dunks, Jordan Ones, and Yeezy 350s on the shelf, and that's it. And some, maybe some Travis Scott. Well, guess what. There's going to be more Yeezys. Yes, <sighs> Yeezys are releasing again. So, so what's the story behind them? It seems like the it ones sounds that like these are pairs that were on order around the time that the Kanye West Adidas relationship fell apart, mm -hmm. that just never made it to the market, and now they're being fulfilled. And sneaker boutiques, we're told, as well as maybe even Foot Locker, one person put out there, will have Yeezys again. I don't know whether or not they're going to continue producing Yeezys into mm -hmm. the future. I think Adidas would like to at this point because yeah. it still could represent a ton of revenue for them. But I the think Eden that's can get. yeah, and I think that's dicier. Let's see. I, I I do think these will sell just fine. I talked to one sneaker store owner who was a little hesitant as to whether or not they'd be just buying as many pairs as they could as they would in the past. But I know other store owners here in the U.S., for example, that are. Super excited to be stocking Yeezys again because they're going to blow through them. Yeah, yeah, because it's still easy shoes to sell for a lot of people. Yeah, I, I, it is what it is, you know. Where it's it's not exciting. I don't think that I know there's 
you know, there's contention about whether the everyone buying the 350s, whether I don't want to say you're you aren't a sneakerhead, you know, but well, I, I, I calm down. No, <laughs> calm it's, down. it's really fine. No, but I, I do think that a lot of people purchasing the 350s maybe think that they're have cool shoes, but yeah. they're not really in this like core world of like sneaker nerdery. It's mm. like the most like base level. I just think I have cool shoes, and that's more so than a that's dunk. fine. Both more so of those, than the, pan, the both panda? of those. I think like both of those are at like that, like just like which is fine. Yeah, which totally is to, which is totally fine. Which is totally fine. It, it's just a different consumer, yeah. I guess. You know, where it's not, you don't really care to be as like informed as much. You just like want the shoes, and maybe that's why you don't look into it as deep as someone else. Who's like, ah, right? Because because if you're really into sneakers, I think you are more likely to attach this meaning to them or to Story think lines. about whether or not they're appropriate to wear. Mm -hmm. You know, um, which pair you're wearing, which colorway is important, why you want this one over that one. You're right that there's a huge base of consumers that just don't think about anything like that. They see the silhouette. They know this is a Yeezy 350. They don't even know it's the V2. They want it. They want to wear it because, I don't, I don't know, some of their friends are wearing it or cool yeah. people were wearing it and they buy it. it doesn't I get think there's still, a, there's still a large amount of people who haven't got a 350 who want it. Really? Yeah. No. I think so. Not no way. No, not haven't gotten it. Just ca like casual? I feel no. like the 350 is so mass at this point that you it could have gotten a pair it, it's not that hard to buy. Yeah. I think it's going to be one of those. You're going to get one for your mom? No, no. But I still <laughs> think that the 350, it's still like pops up on the streets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's everywhere. I, 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 And here's the thing, too. I wonder how long it will take for that shoe to really go away. You know, in, in five years, I let's, don't know. Say, let's say Adidas is not producing Yeezy 350 V2s anymore five years from now. Mm -hmm. Will you still see that shoe out and about? How long will it take mm. for that Yeezy that's so, I mean, that's so ubiquitous so many, to really that's a good expire? Question, but... There's just so many people that you see, you know, they love getting their 350s to go to LA Fitness and do squats on a And Smith they machine. love those pirate blacks. But yeah. they love, like, I just... Uh, you know, when I'm talking to people who are not full, like, into... Full sneaker nerds like we are. Like, it comes up in conversation all the time, like, yeah, the Pirate Black. Like, even even when they restock or whatever, re-release, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, the, the, I think the Pirate Blacks are coming back out. Pirate Black, there's, like... There's just, so many people that I see just on, like, there. IG stories, like, at the gym on the Stairmaster in, like, a pair of 350s. Like, hmm. that's, like, I feel that's what I expect from the shoe. But at the same point... It's it's funny to talk about how long the 350 is going to last, right? Mm -hmm. Because we talk about these shoes and their physical lifespans, right? Where you have a shoe is like, is it going to fall apart? Right? Okay, right. And Boost isn't going to fall apart. But if there's one thing anyone knows about Boost, who's own Boost, once those things get dirty, they're never ever 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 getting clean. And I know 350s are like in encapsulated or whatever i don't know the soul it just feels like boost just it just goes to crap so fast i still think that the people who are at that base level of not being that invested in their shoes and not necessarily Get caring around. whether or not they've put too many miles on them i think they're still going to wear do, them. do you remember that ultra boost era of like having a fresh pair and then just wearing them a little bit and like the boost getting dirty and like trying to scrub it and you realize that like that squeaky noise that oh, you would that, hear. That no, but it's, just, it's just never coming out. Yeah, yeah that was like a the really dirt tough. Just would not come out of that. Uh, yeah, it gets like trapped tough material in, trapped in the. Man, unless that, maybe that, you know you need Jason Marker. Yeah, the right sneaker cleaner would yeah. help you out. You know, a or lot crap. of other companies make boost now and they just don't call it boost. It's the same exact technology. Yeah, it's like Saucony. Makes I don't know what the hell are those. Sorry. Oh, so, yeah, we haven't even. Yeah, we're almost out of here. We no, but there are. About the but no, but Saucony essentially makes Boost. Like if you, it, but it's a different like uh, softness, or mm -hmm. it's, it's a little more firm. It doesn't feel as like unstable when you when you wear it. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the midsole, it has the same. You're not dry snitching right now, are you? No, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> just had to check. No, <laughs> it's, sure. nope. Okay. It's uh, you just look at it and you're like, oh, it's the same. Uh, it's the same essential materials yeah like you have like phylon mid midsole foams like that's mm -hmm. not copyrighted right i will ask what is the best colorway of the 350 none of them <laughs> none turtle dove You're such a hater <laughs> turtle dove might be it would you I ever really... see yourself wearing take kanye west out of the okay. uh, 
or don't take Kanye West out of the equation. Take anything that Kanye West has done in the past to make you dislike him mm-hmm. out of the equation. So All the terrible things he said. So you're only stuck with the pure image in your mind of the old Yeezy, right? The old, the old, the old, the old Kanye. The old Ye. If that was still the old Ye. 350, which one? Would you actually wear a 350 today? I would wear... A- 350, one of the original colorways before the V2, even though I think they know that that shoe wasn't made as well as it could have been, and yeah. that's why they made the V2. There was ones but that like fell apart and stuff. There are versions of the original 350 that I still want, you know, things like the Moonrock pair, and there was one other, Oxford Tan, was that what yeah. that one was called? Those are those are my favorite Oxford versions. Tan was nice, yeah. Do yeah, you I, know my favorite? Sure. Do you know? What? Oh, do, you don't know it. The Pirate Black? <laughs> no. What, what's the your zebra, favorite? zebra, which is a heavily white shoe. I know that. Yeah, and a, a shoe that they brought back a million times. I, I love the zebra. I, really, you love yeah, the zebra? Yeah, all Easy three fifty v two. I do. That's my favorite one. Isn't there okay. that infamous? Uh, it always gets passed around mm-hmm. that the round two video where the dude gets absolutely fleeced for a pair of. Uh, well, it was a trade that made sense at the time. It was it at round two. Yeah, it's it's this person going in, and uh, this was when the. Zebra Yeezy the first 350 round of it, V2. I think. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a shoe that was re- readily available, and I think they were reselling for well over a thousand dollars at the time. And the gentleman goes in and trades a bunch of shoes just to get a one handful, pair, like four or five pairs of shoes. All, all it was like I think it was like all Adidas stuff at the time, like Pharrell. Decent heat, yeah, yeah. Cashes them all in for one pair of Zebra Yeezys. Little did he know. <laughs> the shoes would get destroyed value wise years later, and also. Maybe even be uh, stigmatized in terms of actually putting them on your feet because of the person who's behind them. But yeah, we should interview that person. Mm. Oh, find the person who did the trade. <laughs> yeah, the, the infamous yeah. that video. That video goes around all the time now. I gotta watch that. It's it's, it's a classic. But what, Much like the Yeezy 350 V2, it's a classic. You can't say it's not a classic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What do you have on footprint and done? Right before we get out of here, something yeah. we usually address toward the top, but mm-hmm. we, we've been having fun today floating around. Yep. Yeah. Different places, different topics. I'm wearing the Packer Reebok Club C. Those are nice. Yeah, I like these quite a bit. I nice. saw my boy Victor from Packer. He was around the Barclays Center last okay. night. He so. just gave them to you in the suite, or no? I, oh. I, 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 <laughs> Dude, you know <laughs> that's like, lacing me in the suite. No, I've had these for a while. Just that's okay. like shoe and bring them back. I up. didn't realize that's like all Reebok makes now. Club C's. Yes. I saw way more Club C's when I was in Europe than I did any particular wow. New Balance shoe. Because I uh, have a friend mm-hmm. in the CrossFit space who's like, hey, I'm trying to get into sneakers, mm-hmm. has a connect to Reebok mm-hmm. through because they make the Nanos. Yeah. And he goes, I want to try and get something cool that's like not too hype. I have a connect to... Dunks. Well, he's, no, he, goes, I have, he, goes, he goes, I have a connect to Reebok. Mm-hmm. You know, what could I get? And I was just like trying to help him out. So I go on the website and I didn't realize that there's like... 12 pages of club c's mm. on reebok's website wow. and that's basically like the only retro shoe they make at this point i think it makes sense when you think about what happened to reebok recently with adidas yeah. selling them then being acquired by abg and it being a little bit more of a shell of what it was there's yeah. still great people doing mm-hmm. great work there shout mm-hmm. out to Mubi as we did earlier and todd krinsky as well mm-hmm. a gentleman who was on this podcast but great yeah episode. it makes sense that they would kind of narrow down their offerings actually i want to i want to mention real quick sorry i gotta give another tangent and and i was just taking notes in my head you know Mm -hmm. ethnographic views of how sneakers are consumed in different places in the world and i was at this wedding in the netherlands and a young man came up to me and he was like i heard you're into sneakers i heard you're a sneakerhead and i said yeah (laughs) yeah you heard right buddy (laughs) and he said to me i just got my first pair of new balance 550s what do you think of the 550 and I told him, yeah, it's 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 a great shoe, you know, and mm-hmm. this is some of the history behind it, and I appreciate it. And his response to that was, it's my first sneakerhead shoe. Usually, I just wear stuff like Air Force Ones and things like that. Interesting. And it, was, it was such. It You're was, like, what? Interesting. As, as a person who thinks about how other people perceive these things and what is a sneakerhead shoe, and we we come back to this a lot. Just this idea that the Air Force One is, isn't, isn't the And the 550 head. is? But exactly. it, feels, it feels like opposite worlds. Well, there are cool versions of the 550, obviously, mm-hmm. ALD, but if it's become just like such a basic, just mm-hmm. like, it's an okay shoe. I'm not saying it's a bad shoe by any means, but it yeah. doesn't feel like the majority of the people who wear it, like 
personally consider themselves sneakerheads. Yeah, it was just a f such a flip on what my perception would be of the Air Force One is in some ways the ultimate sneakerhead shoe. It's such a hip hop yeah. shoe and a, a model that's meant so much to to Nike and to all of us. I just I do have to say, recently have seen the the Rich Paul. Yeah, five fifties yeah. going around those. that that like purple with the light purple. Yeah. yeah. Suede, can't wait like to those? see. Yeah, they look pretty good. Can't wait to see Adele wear a pair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Courtside somewhere. I think it would look yeah. pretty good. All right. Sorry. Uh, no. Last tangent for me. Uh, getting to mine, the Endless Summer 4s. What's the joy? I never July tw July 19th. It's been, it feels like it's been an endless summer, especially this week. But, but the thing you <laughs> need to address is I didn't realize. So on, I, on the left shoe, on the medial side, mm -hmm. you got three times, three time champion. You got okay. 19, 20, and 20, was it 22? Yeah, three Webbies. Yeah. That's just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> what? Take these are like, the you know, these are the, Le 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 you know, LeBron writes like, you know, the man, the arena yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Black Cat Jordan 4s. Yeah. A, JL, a big JLP shoe if there ever was one. Maybe the biggest JLP shoe. Yes. That's the biggest JLP shoe of all time. Or Black Bread 4s or Black Cement 4s? Black cement force, depending on who you ask. <laughs> Lorenz 95s, CDG. CDG 95s might be like the fifth place on There's the... There's a bunch. There's a bunch. It's, it's, a 95, it's 95 season right now. It's the 95 it is. era. I love it. And I'm here for it. And we didn't... Did we hit everything? I don't think we hit everything, oh. but hopefully we could like, you know, next week maybe it tie up some loose ends. What? what is there something else a, you want to talk about? No, I'm just saying maybe also like, I don't know. Oh, which shoes I was wearing. Wait, I forgot about this. <laughs> we hit everything. Sorry, hold on. Except the shoes that My I My bad. Wearing. Go ahead. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Uh, no, these are just a Saucony Peregrine Trail 13. Just a pair of performance running shoes. Okay, he sounds not, excited I'm about not hitting, I'm not hitting He always the, sounds excited <laughs> about it. Not hitting the trails in these, unfortunately, yet, but... Do you think the idea of a white mesh trail running shoes seems a little weird to you just dirtying them up yeah bit yeah. strange a couple other projects that we didn't talk about this week that i think we'll get to next week though yeah what right? oh i know maybe yeah, a little yeah, yeah. tease maybe a little yeah. tease yeah we'll be back next week we will be back next week big but episode not a, but not a cortese cortez cortez i don't know i just want the shoes man get them just, just buy them. Should I just buy them yeah. right now on Goat? Look, if Joe, oh, did it, it, do, you, it, do we think that that re-release drove the price down at all? Maybe it depends how many came out. But if Joe can like, just splurge and buy a signed Ricky Henderson baseball <laughs> glove that has no practical application <laughs> in his life, well, no, then, then not for the man cave one to, day. Uh, then I should buy the. Uh, oh, up one one last update because I said I was going to hold myself accountable. I, I was gonna thank God. I wanted to yeah, <laughs> wanted to dye the pair of rad shoes. Uh, I talked to someone about it about doing the process, okay. and they told me they actually told you just throw a nice coffee on it. Nope, <laughs> they, they actually warned me against doing it. Okay, oh. because when you, I didn't realize when you when you dye a shoe, mm -hmm. you basically have to boil it in hot water to get the dye into it. And mm -hmm. he says, and if the shoes are any bit snug on your foot, they're going to shrink another half size. Really? Yeah. Dying the shoes shrinks them? The the upper. I don't know if it's going to stretch back out, but mm. he goes, if you want the, if, if you're going to plan on actually doing fitness in the shoes or something like that. Which and, he is. And yes. you're going to so, have to, and you have to worry about how they actually fit on your feet. He goes, no I good. would advise against dying them if you're going to, they're not going to fit your feet. So I was actually pretty disappointed to hear mm, that. Interesting. That's a, good, that's a good thing to know. <laughs> no, it is. It is. It is. Can I say uh, one thing as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. This Cortez drop in London did not drive the price of the shoes okay, down at you? all. The last size 10 in the pink pair that dropped here in New York, $591. Oof. Wow. Why did I sleep on this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why you slept. Silly. Foolish. It happens, brother. Foolish. All right, listen. Yep. We regroup. Next come back week. stronger. <laughs> next week. Next week. Yeah, come back stronger. No, we regroup. Next week, big episode coming. Mm, that's right. Excited about that one. And yeah, 
All right, everyone, this has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe, comment. We will see you. Yeah, you make sure you leave some comments. Yeah, make sure, yeah we, we read the comments. Also, if, 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 if you're listening to it, we need the ratings. Yeah, right, wait, you know. wait, no. Everyone, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Okay. We're, uh, we everyone on Apple, everyone on Apple, drop reviews in, and one episode. Five-star reviews, five-star reviews. Five-star reviews, but also comments, and mm-hmm. we're going to read them one uh one episode on the Apple ones. That's just going to be a whole hour. The whole not a whole hour. We're going to pick our best ones. Yeah. We're going to pick the our most best flattering ones. ones. We're yeah, we're going <laughs> to yeah only the nice ones. No, but yeah, let's get those um let's get those comments going on Apple Podcast. We need YouTube. that. It makes a difference. Like I said, like subscribe. Everyone, don't be late for next week. We have a big one next week. We will see you next week. <laughs>